بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله we continue going over the tremendously important book by the Imam Al-Allama Imam Bin Baz Rahimahullah Ta'ala the book which is entitled Durus Muhamma Li'amat Al-Ummah the important lessons for the general masses of the Ummah or for the general Muslim. We had reached the statement of Sheikh Abdul Razak, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, Al Badr, Hafidhahumullah Ta'ala. When he mentions, he says, For Tawheed, Kufrun bil Ta'ud, Wa Imanun billah. And this here articulates the concept of a nafi wal ithbat, negation and affirmation. Because these are the pillars of la ilaha illallah, on which it cannot be established except by way of them. And they are disbelief in the false deities and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَالتَّوْحِيدْ كُفْرٌ بِالطَّاغُوتِ So thus, Tawheed is to disbelieve in that which is worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's to disbelieve in the false deities. وَإِمَانٌ بِاللَّهِ And it is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَهَذَا مَدْلُولٌ Kalima at Tawheed. So this is the or that which is indicated and pointed to by the statement of at Tawheed. Naam. The statement of La ilaha illallah. This is what enters into the meaning and this is what it points to. It points us to disbelieving in the false deities and to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Shaykh he says something which is very important and vital that we know. And that is for he said Kalimatan La Ma'na Laha. It is not a statement that has no meaning. La ilaha illallah is not a statement that bears no meaning. Aw Lavatan La Madrula Laha. Nor is it an articulation in which points to nothing. Nor is it an articulation which points to nothing. Naam. Bal he a kalimatun. مشتملة على أعظم المعاني but rather it is a statement that consists and comprises of the greatest of the meanings وأجل المقاصد and the most noble of that which is intended or the most noble of intent وأنبل الأهداف وأعظمها and it points to the most noble and the most honorable of targets and the greatest from amongst them. At-Tawheed Allah Jalla wa'ala The Tawheed of Allah Jalla wa'ala Naam? Fala yakunu al-abd muwahidan illa illa bit-tahqiq madallat alayhi la ilaha illallah So an individual he will not be a muwahid he will not be a monotheist. He will not be one who implements the Tawheed until he establishes that which is pointed to by La ilaha illallah. Until he establishes 
that which is pointed to in the meaning of La ilaha illallah. This here is something, and we're going to pause for a quick second, that is very important that La ilaha illallah is not a statement that is just articulated upon the tongue and then that's it. It is not just a statement that if a person says it just by the mere saying of it, then that's it, then they are straight. No, it is a statement that has to be said, it has to be understood, it has to be implemented. It requires, it necessitates implementation. So an individual, he has to say it while knowing full and well its meaning, while believing full and well in that which it points to, while implementing that which it points to. Only then will a person benefit from La ilaha illallah. And this is of grave importance that we understand this because an individual's success is not linked to the mere articulation of La ilaha illallah, but they have to properly believe in and establish that which is pointed to by La ilaha illallah. I'll give to you an example. If we were to go out here, open the door and grab any person walking by, the first one, and we pull them in and we say, listen, repeat after me. And they say, okay, whatever you say. And we say to them, say, La ilaha illallah. And then they say, La ilaha illallah. Did that person enter into Islam? Mind you, I'm talking about a random individual who never heard anything about Islam, don't know nothing about Islam, never read a sentence about Islam. But I pull him in the door, I say, listen, I want you to say what I say. He said, okay, no problem, I'm going to say what you say. And I say, listen, say, repeat after me, La ilaha illallah. And he says, La ilaha illallah. Is that person a Muslim? No, why? But he doesn't know what he said. He doesn't know what it means. How is he going to believe in it? He doesn't know what it means. He doesn't know what he said. He may not even be able to identify what language in which Danny the statement is in. He just repeated and said what I said. That's it. So it won't benefit him unless what? Unless he understands its meaning. He believes in it. Ma'am? And then he says it upon that knowledge. Then will he enter into Islam? Yes. Of course. Then he'll enter into Islam. Because he believes in the meaning. He believes what it points to. And then what? And then he says it upon knowledge. So at that point, what? He enters into Islam. He becomes a Muslim. Damn, he becomes a Muslim. And then, as a Muslim, for the rest of his life, he'll be what? He'll be implementing the Tawheed. He'll be implementing a Tawheed. Bithnillahi ta'ala. Right. So, when we understand this as being a reality, then I want us to reflect deeply on the next thing that the Shaykh he mentions. I want us to reflect deeply upon this. Because listen, the Shaykh he says that he has to, he will not be a muwahid, he will not be a monotheist, he will not be one who implements the tawheed until he establishes that which is pointed to by la ilaha illallah. From what? Min nafi al an kulli man siwa Allah jalla wa'ana. Is that he will have to negate servitude. He will have to negate Al-Ubudiyya, servitude, for anything other than Allah. Naam? So this means what? There will be no servitude that they will give to anything other than Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam? Well, if that and the establishment of what? Of Al-Ubudiyya. Bikulli ma'aniha. Lillahi wahda is that they will establish al ubudiyah they will establish true servitude in all of its meanings true servitude as we say in English in every sense of the word to Allah alone to Allah alone Naam Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah has a beautiful book called al ubudiyah servitude Naam Bidnilahi ta'ala for those who have the ability, and I believe this book has been translated. In fact, yes, many years ago it has been translated. Naam. As far as, this is just a disclaimer, full disclosure. As far as the quality of the translation and who was the translator, I don't know. I don't know. Naam. So I just want you to understand that. I don't know. But I know it was translated many years ago. Those who are able to get their hands on it, inshallah ta'ala, if you can benefit from it, benefit from it. For those who understand Arabic, uh, then really you shouldn't even be listening to this class right now. <laughs> right? 
Listen to the mashayikh, listen to the ulama. Don't waste your time listening to me. Ala kulli hal. But in any event, if you're here and you, and you, and you understand Arabic, then read it in Arabic, inshallah ta'ala, and, and go through the explanations of the book with the mashayikh, bithnillahi ta'ala, from the recordings and from the books that have been authored that explain it. In any event, it's a book of tremendous importance, servitude. Now, because our servitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Naam, alone. Bye. The Shaykh goes on and he says, وَلِهَذَا فَإِنَّ قَائِلْ So thus, in light of this, verily, the one who says, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ حَقًّا وَصِدْقًا لَا يَدْعُوا إِلَّا اللَّهِ So thus, the one who says, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ truthfully and sincerely, then he will not invoke anyone except Allah. He will not supplicate to anyone except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يَسْتَغِيثُ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ Nor will he seek help in times of peril except with Allah. وَلَا يَتَوَكَّلُ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ And he will not put his trust in anything except for Allah. نعم. وَلَا يَطْلُبُ المدد إِلَّا مِنَ اللَّهِ And he will not look for support except from who? Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَا يَذْبَحُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ Nor will he sacrifice and slaughter Except for Allah وَلَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ And he will not take oaths Except for who? For Allah نعم وَلَا يَصْرِفُ شَيْئًا مِنَ الْعِبَادَ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ وَحْدَ And he will not give anything from worship Except to Allah alone So these categories of worship And what's the shaykh he mentioned then these are what? These are just examples. Now, these are just examples. They are not to be meant or to be understood as being the whole of the situation. These are examples. Now, these are examples. So the list includes, but it's not limited to the things that was the Shaykh mentioned. They will not slaughter except for Allah. They will not take an oath except for Allah. They will not supplicate except unto Allah. They will not put their trust except upon Allah. So on and so forth. Now, and everything that is listed from the anwa' the categories of an ibadah of worship. It will all be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran he says Pul in the salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lilla Rabbil Alameen La Sharika Lahu wa bidalika umirt وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Allah Ta'ala, He says what translated means. And verily my prayer, my salah, and my nusuk, my slaughtering, and my life, and my death, is for Allah, the Lord of all that exists. Hmm. Now, you see? Without any partners associated unto him. With this we have been commanded. Or with this I have been commanded. And I am the first of the believers. I am the first of the Muslims. The first of those to submit themselves. Unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With tawheed. Naam. To be compliant unto Allah ta'ala. With obedience. And to, adose, and to disassociate myself from shirk. From polytheism, from polytheism and from the mushrikeen, from the polytheist. When we look here at this verse, and again, these are from, these are examples. These are examples from the anwar of ibadah. But when we look at these verse, we look at this verse, or these two verses, yani, right? And we say that verily my, my, my salat, my prayer, and my slaughtering. All of it is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are examples, right? And then, my life, what we live for. You understand? Especially, and this is something that's very important because there are many phrases that come on people's tongues due to them being raised and reared in this country, the country of the Christians. So thus we know it's a country of shirk, country of the kuffar, country of shirk. Huh? 
there are a lot of phrases that people they, they say upon their tongues that are not correct. You 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 hear people saying that they they yeah they they live for their cause and they live for this they live for that. Our life as Muslims is what is for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Is it for this cause or that cause or this thing or that thing or this movement or that move? No, it's for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Naam. Wa mamati and my death. It's for who? It's for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. As Muslims, we should be of those who are striving to live our lives in manners that are what that are pleasing unto Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, so that we meet our end, we meet our death in a manner that is pleasing unto Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But now think about those individuals who they make shirk with their love. Think about it. Think about it. The little hallmark cards with the little shirk in it, and people they say, "Oh, it's so cute." No, ain't nothing cute about shirk. When they're telling them, oh, I live for you, and I die for you, I love you so much, I live for you, I love you so much, I die for you, and not, what is this? Shirk. Shirk in what? Muhabba. Instead of loving for Allah, an individual is loving with Allah. So they're loving things like they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they may be loving things more than they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa iyadu billah. But these are matters and these are affairs that are important for us to acknowledge and to understand that our life and our death is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to live our lives in a manner that is pleasing unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to meet our end. We have to meet our death in a manner that is pleasing unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not die except that you are what? You are Muslim. Do not die except that you are submitting yourself unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ O you who believe, fear Allah as He should be feared, and do not die except that you are Muslims. A Muslim is a person who has submitted himself. A Muslim is a person who is upon the religion of Islam. نعم. طيب. As a review, what is the meaning of Islam? What is the general meaning of Islam? Naam. As a review, what is the general meaning of Islam? Uh -huh. I mentioned it a little while ago. This is something ta'ala <clears throat> that everyone has to, to, to know inside and out, write down. Uh, memorize because it helps you better understand it helps you better understand this aim Allah Ta'ala is telling you don't die except that you're a Muslim the best way for you to do that is to understand what is what does it mean a Muslim what does Islam mean what does Islam mean ma'am Islam the general meaning of Islam the general meaning of Islam that deen that all of the prophets and the messengers they were upon. It is what? Al Istislamu Lillah bit Tawheed. To submit oneself to Allah with Tawheed. Naam. To submit oneself to Allah with Tawheed. Tawheed upon all of his anwa. All of his categories. Because the, the all of his yani aqsam. Huh? Because the aqsam of Tawheed is what? It's three. Sit, it's three. It's three. Naam. Uh, tawheed the Tawheed of the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawheed al uluhiya The Tawheed of the Ibadah. The all of the worship belongs unto Allah and Allah alone. Every category worship belongs to Allah and to Allah alone. Only Allah is worshipped. Naam. Tayyip. With Tawheed al Asma'u al Sifat. And the Tawheed of the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So an individual has to submit himself unto Allah ta'ala with a Tawheed. That he implement the Tawheed. And, 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 and thus when we understand just that first portion of it. Do we understand the importance of lessons like this. And why uh, Imam bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala included this in what? In the important lessons. Because it is, it is a very important and vital lesson. Naam. It's a very important and vital lesson. Naam. And if a person were to reflect... If a person were to reflect on uh, the book up until this point, and this is just to back up so we can better understand the book that we're studying, 
a person may say, well, if it's that important, why did Imam bin Baz mention it as a second lesson? Right? A person may say, if it's that important, you understand, why did he mention it as a second lesson? The reality of it is, is that he goes into more depth and detail as a second lesson, but the concept of Tawheed in all of its categories was mentioned where? In the first lesson. Was the first thing that was mentioned. Why? Because the first thing that he mentioned was to uh, uh, be able to read properly, memorize, understand the meaning of what? Surah Al Fatiha. And inside of Surah Al Fatiha is what? Is filled with Tawheed. All of the categories of Tawheed is mentioned where? In Surah Al Fatiha. You understand? So it was already mentioned. It was already stressed in Surah Al Fatiha, the Tawheed. And likewise, subsequently, in all of the surah that we mentioned after, because every surah of the Qur'an, it talks about Tawheed, either directly or indirectly. It talks about Tawheed because either telling you to worship Allah Ta'ala alone, or it's telling you to uh, uh, um, to stay away from shirk, na'am, or because it's telling you the reward of those who implement the, the, the Tawheed, or it's telling you the bad repercussions of those who went against the Tawheed, huh? or it's talking about the ahkam, Telling you how to implement yani, the, the rules and the regulations to express, to implement, to establish, to act upon what the Tawheed. So when you look at it, yeah, uh, and likewise, yani, you can say, yani, it brings stories of the prophets, which what which tell us how they call the people the Tawheed, the, the end result of those who listen, the end result of those who disobeyed and stayed upon shirk, so on and so forth. So every ayah in the Quran what teach you about Tawheed. Huh? Either directly or indirectly Talking about Tawheed So it was filled The first lesson was filled with it It was filled with it But remember we were talking about last week That what? That Islam is a deen of details So the shaykh he didn't just leave it like that You know for you just to get it But rather he came back And he specifically mentioned it Because this is the way of the people of the sunnah They don't throw things out there in general And, th and say okay they'll figure it out No No they bring the details. So although there may be times where things are mentioned generally, now, there may be times where things are mentioned generally, but you will find also, if you go through the whole of it from beginning to the end, you will find details. You'll find details. So the Shaykh, he comes back in the second lesson, and then he what? He brings you the details. He emphasizes, making sure that, it's, that, 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 that we get it and that it's understood. When we look, going back to the definition of a Tawheed, the first line is what? To submit one's, uh, of Islam, excuse me, the definition of Islam. The first line of it is that we submit ourselves. It is to submit oneself to Allah with Tawheed. So we see the importance of this lesson. Naam. And it is to be compliant unto Him with obedience. And it is to disassociate ourselves, disavow ourselves from polytheism and from the polytheist. This is the general definition of Islam. Let's, 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 let's say it again. It is an istislamu lillah bit tawheed. To submit oneself unto Allah with tawheed. Wal inqiyadu lahu bi ta'ah. And to be compliant unto him with obedience. Wal bara'a min al-shirk wal mushrikeen. And to disavow ourselves from polytheism and from the polytheist. From shirk and from the mushrikeen. But again, it is in English only this time. It is to submit ourselves to Allah with Tawheed. Naam. To submit ourselves to Allah with Tawheed. Naam. Al Istislam lillah with Tawheed. To submit ourselves to Allah and Allah alone with what? At Tawheed. That's, that's, that's number one. To be compliant unto Allah with obedience. To be compliant unto Him with our obedience. Now, Allah gives us a command, we do it. Allah tells us to stay away from something, we stay away from it. Allah tells us when we make sin, then we have then, 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 we, then we ask for forgiveness. So if we fall into something that we shouldn't that we shouldn't be doing, then what? Then we have to repent unto Allah like Allah commands us to do when we fall into sin. Huh? So a person, a Muslim now, strives to live his life in accordance to the rules of Islam. He strives to live his life in accordance to that which Allah Ta'ala revealed it in the Quran and inside of the Sunnah. So this is what is meant by being compliant unto him with obedience. That doesn't mean you're going to be 100% perfect, you're never going to make a mistake. No, the Prophet told us, 
All of the children of Adam make mistakes, they make sins. And the best of those who make sins are those who repent. So we're going to make sins. Okay? A person making a sin doesn't mean, doesn't remove him from being compliant and obedience. No, he's just being a human being. He's just being a person. Because people make sins. People make mistakes. People are not perfect. Right? But for the believer, for the Muslim, when he makes sins, then he what? He turns around and he repents unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and, you know, with all of the categories of, uh, excuse me, with all the conditions of repentance. Now, right, right. So we have to be compliant unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what? With obedience. Now, with obedience. Which doesn't mean that you have to be what? Sinless. It's not possible. You're going to make sense. When you make sense, what do you do? Make tawbah. You repent unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we're sinners, then we should be increasing and saying al istighfar Astaghfirullah. Oh Allah, forgive me. Now, because we know we're sinners. So we should be constantly asking Allah to forgive us. Repenting for the sins in which we have done. Now, this all is enters into being compliant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with obedience. Now, and the thirdly, wal bara'a min shirk wal mushrikeen. And we that we disavow ourselves from shirk from polytheism and from the polytheist. Now, and I apologize, I said this time no Arabic and I forgot. So excuse me, I forgot. So we disavow ourselves from uh, polytheism and from the polytheists. That we disavow ourselves from the polytheists and from poly, uh, and polytheism. Now, this is what it means to be a Muslim. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that we don't die except that we are Muslims. That we are upon Islam. In the meaning of what Islam means. This is how we're supposed to meet death. You understand what I'm saying? And part of that dis disavowment and dissociating from the polytheists is that what? Is that we strive to be different from them. And that which is particular unto them. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Man bi qawmin fa huwa minhum. Whoever imitates the people is from them. That's why as Muslims, what? We strive to be different. Now we strive. I mean, of course, we got to be different in the way we believe. They upon shirk, we got to be upon tawheed. Huh? They upon superstitions and all this type of nonsense, and we upon the truth. We upon the how. You understand? But that also translates into what? Into their mannerisms, into their their yani, their, their 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 character. They upon filthy character. So we are, so as Muslims, we we have to be upon good character. This is what Islam calls us. Yeah, yani, uh, uh, yani, to be upon good character, we have to have good character. We have to have good conduct. They lie. It is not for a Muslim to be lying. The mu'min la yakdib. They are upon filth in their lifestyle, from fornication, from this, from that, drinking of alcohol. And this is Muslims. We don't do that stuff. Now, but it also translates into everything. This is why as Muslims we strive what not to look like them in the manner in which we clad ourselves. They dress in a certain way, we don't dress like that. And we're happy not to dress like that. You understand? This is not to say that you can't wear something, uh, you know, uh, for work or this nature. You're doing some work and, and, and not, so you want to put on a pair of pants and a shirt. Okay. But our pants and shirt, we shouldn't wear them like they wear theirs. So ours should be baggy, they should be long, they should be covering that which has to be covered. Our pants should rest above our ankles. I'm talking about the men, you're picking on the men. Okay? Our pants are supposed to be above our ankles. Baggy. Our shirts should be baggy and long. Come down below our aura. Huh? So all the little skinny jean, that stuff, that's not for the Muslim man to be wearing. He should, he should be ashamed to be caught outside looking like that. That looks like what like a homosexual wears. It does. That's what homosexuals wear. Okay? Walking around with a tight shirt. Huh? I don't care if you got muscles. That's not for you to be walking around showing people that type of stuff. That's how homosexuals dress. It is. This is the reality. In any event, it's not how Muslims dress. You walking around with skinny jeans on and a, and a really tight shirt because you think you got some muscles in that. How you gonna pray like that? So I come in, how you gonna pray? You understand what I'm saying? How are you going to pray? 
Are you recognizable? Somebody could ride by you and look in your heart and say, oh, that's a Muslim brother. No, you like you like a you know, some some joker, man. You don't know who you is. But you're looking like them. So even from down to these things, the Muslim should be yeah, he should be happy to be distinct from the kuffar. The Prophet is whoever imitates the people is from them. Now that, that type of style, that, that's not from us. We didn't admit that. Walking around with your pants hanging down below your butt. We, that's, we didn't invent that. You know who invented that? Homosexuals. <laughs> Homosexuals, that's where it comes from. From homosexuals. Letting the other homosexuals know that they are ready for them. You understand? You want to walk around like that? Telling the, telling the gay people you're ready? Come on, man. So the point is, is that these things, you know, we don't study the likes of these things just because they're good words and you know what I mean and, and so on and so forth and they sound good and we feel good about ourselves and soup ourselves up and think oh yeah I did something good and then we leave and then for the rest of the week we walking around looking crazy. No. This is so that we can understand, so that we can implement, so that we can do, we can be better. So that we can try to hold on to our deen so that when death comes to us we, we die in a way that's proper. You want to die in a way like that? You walking around looking like a homosexual then now death come to you? you do you feel comfortable with that? Hmm? You feel comfortable now? When it's time to, to do your janazah, now we gotta cut off your little tight girly pants? And your gay looking shirt? You feel happy with that? This is something to think about, because we don't know when death is going to come to us. In any event, we should strive to be different from the kuffar in everything that they do. That is particular unto them, okay? And everything that they do that is particular unto them, that which is a hallmark of theirs, that is that they are known by. Then we should try to be different and not be like that. Those things that we have in common, then we have in common. You know, we have to eat, they eat. Right? We drink, they drink. We like Snapple, they like Snapple. I mean, okay, no problem. Right? This is no advertisement for them people, but I'm just saying. Right? And, 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 and to the end of it, we're speaking about those things that are hallmarks of theirs. They're, they're those things that they are known and uh, by and identified by. In any event, eloquently have. And then for the women, I mean, you know, that's clear, right? Our women, they have to dress in a manner that is that is proper. They have to dress in a manner that is proper. But in any event for the brothers, and this is just you know, advice to the brothers, right? Even if, even if, you know, for whatever the case is, don't try not to try not try not to ever be caught with your wife dressed properly and, and you looking like a um, a duck. Okay? Your wife dressed properly and you got a Fendi suit on, you looking like, you know, Ralph Lauren or something. That that looks bad. It's 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 the optics are very bad because and, and I'm saying this and this is just you know being real men to men because if you're walking in the supermarket like this and your wife is she covered all properly and things like this and you're walking around and you got on some you know slacks or some loafers and you know what I mean the button up shirt because you think you know you look cute and things like that I want you to step back and look at that scenario from people looking at it she's all dressed up got all these layers of clothes on and you looking like you from Miami Vice. Doesn't that look oppressive? I'm asking, doesn't that look oppressive? She's all dressed like this, and look him, he could be free. Right? Not saying that her dress like that is a sign of oppression, because it's not. But that's the optics, especially when the news is telling them in the media that the Muslim women are oppressed, Muslim men oppressed their women, Muslim men oppressed their women, Muslim men oppressed their women. Now they look in and they, they come inside the supermarket and they see she's all covered up and things like that, and they look at you and you look like, you understand? That's, that's, that's bad optics. You should be ashamed of yourself. So really, never, never, never try to get caught in a situation like that. Ever. 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 I don't care if you got to put on a, a, a Azar with a polo shirt. That's fine. Let it be known. We Muslim. You know, we different. We not like you people. Period. Okay? In any event, I digress. When we look at these two verses... قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ That verily say, say unto them, O Muhammad, that verily my salah and my slaughtering and my living and my death, my life and my death is for Allah, the Lord of all that exists, to him and him alone without any partners. لَا شُرِيكَ لَهُ There are no partners to be associated with him. With this I have been commanded and I am from the first of the, the Muslims. 
this is what we should strive to be implementing so that the whole of our life is a life of tawheed, a life of obedience, a life upon any tawheed or sunnah. The Shaykh goes on and he says, وَبِهَذَا يُعْلَمُ أَنَّ مُجَرَّدَ الْقَوْلِ هَذِهِ الْكَلِمَةِ لَا يَكْفِي He says, so for this we know that the mere articulation of this statement is not enough. Just a person saying it is not enough. بَلْ لَبُدَّ مِنْ الْعِلْمِ بِمَعْنَاهَا But he has to know what is the meaning. وَالْفَهْمِ بِمَدْلُولِهَا And he has to know and he has to understand that which it points to. He has to not just know the meaning but understand that which is connected to the meaning. And, that, and this is something that is very important. Not just that they know the meaning, but they fully understand the full extent of the meaning and that which is connected to it. Naam? And that which it points to. It's very important. And it is a must that they implement that they have to implement the tawheed to its full extent and they have to implement that which is intended by it min from ifradillah azza wa jal bil wahdaniyyah is that they single out Allah alone with al wahdaniyyah that all of the ibadah is for Allah and Allah alone they single him out it's only for him alone naam they are true monotheists they are true monotheists naam wal ikhlas wa ikhlas din lahu tabarak wa ta'ala and that all of their religion is sincerely for him tabarak wa ta'ala and that's very important all of the religion so therefore what enters or uh, excuse me what is excluded from that is what is showing off what's excluded from that is what's called sum'ah naam riya wa sum'ah riya is to do things that people can see you know you're showing off right you're doing things and they can see it sum'ah is a person showing off but from the standpoint that it, people will hear about it they hear about it now, a person say, oh, you know, you do something, and then they go talk about you other places. So a person do something because he want people to go talk about him and things like that. No, we have to have ikhlas. Everything we do should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah ta'ala alone. And I'm stressing this point to say this is that what? Is that when it comes to the matter of ikhlas, when it comes to the matter of having a sincere intention, it is not that which a person, yani, it just, it come easy like that. Huh? As the Summer of the Self, they used to say, what? That there's been nothing, there's been the, the treatment of anything, uh, or, or nothing has had a more severe treatment upon me than my intention. Or nothing have I treated more intently or severely than my intention. It, it, it takes a lot. You have to yani, make sure your intention is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to keep fighting yourself to make sure that what you're doing is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to keep checking yourself and keep reviewing and going over to make sure that what you're doing is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My point is that it takes great effort. It takes great effort. It's not just, you know, a, a claim that people will say, but it takes great effort. As you find, as the, uh, the ulama, they mentioned, that no one fears hypocrisy. No one fears being a hypocrite, except for a true believer. And no one feels safe from hypocrisy, except a hypocrite. You understand? Nobody fears hypocrisy, Except a true believer And nobody feels safe From being a hypocrite Except Or no one feels safe From hypocrisy Except a hypocrite The hypocrites Is the only one that's saying Nah I can't be no hypocrite Only the hypocrites say that Whereas a true believer I don't know Not saying Yani Nifaq uh, akbar We're not talking about Major nifaq But minor nifaq the believer understands, yes, it's possible. I can fall into some minor nifaq. Right? So no one fears hypocrisy except a true believer. So we got to keep checking ourselves to make sure we're doing we're doing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if a person, he would just to say, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, thumma yanquduha bi maqalihi. He says, La ilaha illallah, and then he negates it with his statement. Or with his actions. Like what? Like he supplicates other than Allah. He'll say, Merida ya fulan, support O so and so. Now again, support O so and so, meaning it matters in only which Allah Ta'ala has, yani, could do. 
So he's saying, for example, for example, he may be sick, right? Oh, so and so, cure me, right? He, uh, I don't know. He, he may want for his maybe have some problems, you know, his wife getting pregnant, things like that. So he says, oh, so and so, you know, make it so me and my wife have children. An individual doesn't have the ability to do these things. A person is sick, an individual doesn't have the ability to cure you. It's not, it's not, you know, the cure is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The cure is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see that every day inside the hospitals and the doctor offices and so on and so forth. Now, person A comes, you know, patient A comes in, he has an ailment, the doctor treats him, right? And then Allah cures that person, that person gets better. Patient B comes in, exact same scenario. The doctor treats him, exact same treatment. But that person don't get better, he may die. This way we understand what? That and he taking the asbab, yeah, we have to take the asbab, but ultimately what? The cure is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala cures whom he pleases and he doesn't cure others as he wills. Ma'am, so the cure is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person coming and saying, Oh so and so cure cure me. He doesn't have the ability to cure them. Oh so and so yeah, and he saved me from the fire. You don't have the ability to save you from the fire. Oh, so and so enter me into Jannah. So and so have the ability to enter you into Jannah. So a person saying something like this, this will negate. Or this will negate what his tawheed. It will negate La ilaha illallah. Will negate what he just said. Or a person saying, Oh, aghithni ya fulan. A person saying, Oh, save me. Oh, so and so. Seeking help in times of peril. Seeking help in times of peril. For example, may Allah Taala grant us all safety and protection. For example, a person he's on a ship somewhere and the ship goes down in the middle of the ocean and, and he's out there holding on to some, some debris from the ship and so on and so forth and he's calling out, oh so and so, oh so and so, uh, save me. What a person gonna be you save you in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean? You're calling on somebody, you don't even hear you, you don't even know what you're saying. You understand? And, and, and this is times of peril. And in such a situation, you have to call upon Allah so to Allah because only Allah to Allah can save you in such a situation. Our person he says, Yani out. A person said, Oh, I seek refuge in you, O Fulan. Of course, we're talking about what? In situations in which only Allah Ta'ala can save you from. Or I'm seeking refuge in you or going to you for safety, O Fulan. This is only in things in which what? A person has. Meaning that they, they're asking such things in, in, in that in which a person does not have the ability to do. You understand? And that which a person does not have the ability to do. This is shirk. This is shirk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will negate a person's tawheed. Or they will sacrifice in other than Allah's name or take an oath in other than Allah's name. This is shirk. This will negate his kalima of la ilaha illallah. فَهَذَا كُلُّهُ نَاقِضٌ لِلَّهِ إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ So all of this, this is that which will negate La ilaha إِلَّا اللَّهِ It will negate La ilaha إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ إِنَّمَا تَنْفَعُ قَائِلُهَا So La ilaha إِلَّا اللَّهِ إِنَّمَا تَنْفَعُ قَائِلَهَا إِذَا قَالَهَا عَنْ فَهْم لِمَعْنَاهَا وَتَحْقِيقَ so la ilaha illallah will only benefit a person who says it understanding or knowing its meaning and understanding what it points to and implementing that which it points to. It will only benefit a person who understands his meaning and he and he establishes that in which it points to. And they establish that uh, which is yani, they, they, they establish it tawheed to the epitome of what it means to establish it tawheed and they establish what it points to and they establish its purpose they establish its goal and they establish that which is intended by it from being sincere or yani, from the tawheed of Allah and from having all of the religion sincerely for Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone Naam. And then the Shaykh bin Allah Ta'ala, he gets into the issue and he further explains how the mushrikun, meaning those polytheists in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the Quraysh, they understood well what La ilaha illallah meant. But because they did not submit themselves unto it, 
due to their arrogance and their like, and they did not accept it, it did not benefit them. So the men knowing what it means will not benefit you. But you have to know what it means and then implement that which it points to. Now, it has to be knowledge and action. But just knowing what it means and then not implementing it, then this will not benefit anyone. This will not avail anyone in any which way, shape, uh, and form. Well, I can. يتوقف هنا فنكتفي بهذا القدر وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا